Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing via Kali Linux. So I'll be continuing the previous tutorial. So in the previous tutorial, I taught you about what is ARP exactly and how it works. And I also taught you about the man in the middle attack, how what exactly it is. So here's a simple example of the Jessica, the receptionist, that tells um, uh, the word to print the latest company's contact list. So I'll be teaching you this example in detail so that you will know what ARP poisoning or ARP spoofing is. And then we will take a look at uh, later on at DNS spoofing, DNS poisoning, the difference between them, and later on the finally the traffic tunneling. So here's an example of normal ARP communication. Jessica uh, is a receptionist in a latest company, uh, in a good company, and it tells the word, my MS word, to print the company's latest contact, li contact list. So this is her first print job today, and her computer has the IP address 192.168.0.16. She wants to send the print job to HP LaserJet printer, and the address of IP address of the HP LaserJet printer is 192.168.0.45. So Jessica's computer broadcasts an ARP request uh, to the entire local network asking who has the IP address 192.168.0.45 as seen in, in this diagram. And all the devices on the network ignore this ARP request except for the HP LaserJet printer. The printer recognizes its own IP in the request and sends an ARP reply. Hey, this is my IP address and here is my MAC address uh, as you can see in this diagram. So and now Jessica's computer knows the printer's MAC address. It sends the print job to the connect device and it also associates the printer's MAC address of uh, 00 uh, whatever it may be with the printer's IP address of 192.168.0.45 in its ARP table. So the founders of networking actually probably simplified the communication process for ARP so that it would function uh, efficiently. But unfortunately, this simplicity also leads to major insecurity. Uh, know why my short description of SOA of ARP doesn't mention any sort of authentication method? Because in ARP there is none, and it is quite a very much more insecure method of communicating between people between computers when there are no secure connections. ERP is very trusting, as you can say the specific term would be uh, killable. And when a network device sends an ARP request, it simply trusts uh, that when, an, when the ARP comes in, it really does, does come from the correct device. ERP provides no way to verify that the responding device is really who it says it is. So if I go ahead and spoof my MAC address over here, uh, IP address and MAC address as well, but the first time it goes ahead and asks uh, the method and I will straight away go ahead and tell I have this IP address and MAC address and I'll send it back to them and the computer will later think that I, the attacker, has this IP address and the MAC address. So this is how it works. Uh, in fact, many operating systems implement ARP so trustingly that the devices have not made an ARP request still accept uh, ARP replies from other devices. So think like a malicious hack. You just lo learned that the ARP protocol has no way of verifying ARP replies. You have learned many devices accept ARP replies before even requesting them. And uh, well, I don't, don't I craft a perfectly valid yet malicious ARP reply containing any arbitrary IP and MAC address I choose? I can do that. Since my victim's computer will blindly accept the ARP entry into its ARP table, I can force my victim's uh, computer into thinking that any IP is related to any MAC address I want. That means it asks for any IP address, it will be my computer, no one else's. Better yet, I can broadcast my faked ARP reply to the victim's entire network and fool all of his computers. So that's how it can be done. So back to reality now you probably understand why this common technique is called as ARP cache poisoning or just ARP poisoning either way. The attacker lies to a device on your network corrupting or poisoning its understanding of where other devices are. Uh, the frighteningly simple procedure enables the hacker to cause a variety of networking woes described next that I will be teaching you. And all the ARPs are now belong to us. The ability to associate any IP address with any MAC address uh, provides hackers with many attack vectors including denial of service, man in the middle and MAC flooding. 
and just before you ask me what these things are uh, i would be teaching you that in later part of the tutorial and denial of service attack a hacker can easily associate an operatingly operationally significant ip address to a false mac address for ex for instance let's say for example a hacker can send an arp re uh, reply associating your network's uh, network router's ip address with a mac address that doesn't exist your computers believe that uh, they know where your real uh, default gateway is but in reality they are sending any packet whose destination is not on the local segment into the great bit bucket into the sky and in one move the hacker has cut off your network from the internet and he's only the person handling the account handling the computer after that we have man in the middle attack and as i told you a hacker can exploit ARP cache poisoning to intercept network traffic uh, traffics between two devices in your network. For instance, let's say the hacker wants to see all the traffic between your computer that's 192.168.0.12 and your internet router that's 192.168.0.1. The hacker begins by sending a malicious ARP reply for which uh, there was no previous request to your router associating with his uh, computer's MAC address with 192.168.0.12. Now your router thinks the hacker's computer is your computer. Next, the hacker sends a malicious ARP reply to your computer associating his MAC ID, MAC address with your uh, 192.168.0.1. Now your machine thinks the hacker's computer is your router. Finally, the hacker turns on uh, the an operating system feature called as IP forwarding. This enables the hacker hacker's machine to forward any network traffic it receives from your computer to the router. So when you try to go to the internet, your computer sends the network traffic to the hacker's machine, which it then forwards to the real router. Since the hacker is still forwarding your traffic to the internet uh, router, you remain unaware that he is intercepting all your network traffic and perhaps also sniffing your clear text passwords or hijacking your secure internet sessions as well. And then we have another attack which is MAC flooding. MAC flooding is an ARP uh, cache poisoning technique aimed at network switches. If you need a reminder about the difference between a hub and a switch, then uh, when certain switches are, you can go and check over the internet and you will get a lot of information. When certain switches are overloaded, they often drop into a hub mode and in hub mode, the switch is too busy to enforce its uh, port security features and it just broadcasts all network traffic to every computer in our network. And by flooding a switch ARP table with a ton of spoofed ARP replies, a hacker can overload many vendor switches and then packet sniff your network while the switch is in the hub. So you might be a bit more scared right now that if the hackers can do all of these things, then uh, what uh, can you do? But uh, just calm down, this is the scary stuff. ARP cache poisoning is trivial to exploit yet that it can result in very significant network compromise. However, before you jump to uh, any uh, other, uh, uh, looking at any other video such as DEF CON 7, you may notice that the major mitigating factor, only local attackers can exploit ARP's insecurities. A hacker would need either physical access to your network or control uh, of a machine on your local network in order to deliver an ARP cache poisoning attack. ARP's insecurities can't, cannot be exploited remotely, he needs to be physically present there. That said, hackers have known to be good to gain local access to networks, good network administrators should be aware of the ARP cache poisoning techniques as well. Since ARP cache poisoning results from lack of security in a protocol that is required for TCPIP networking to function, you cannot fix it but you can help prevent ARP attacks using some of the techniques such as keep your network small. If you manage a small network, you might try using static IP addresses and static ARP tables or using command line CLI commands such as ipconfig slash all in windows or ipconfig in Nix, unix or you can learn the IP address and MAC address of every device in your network. Then using the ARP space hyphen S command, you can add static ARP entries for all your known devices. Static means unchanging, that cannot be changed and dynamic IP address means something that can be changed. This prevents the attackers from adding spoofed ARP entries for devices in your network. You can even create a login script that would add these boot static changes to your PC every time they boot. However, static uh, ARP uh, entries are hard to maintain, impossible in large networks. That's because every device you uh, add to your network has to be manually added to your ARP script or entered into each machine's ARP table. But if you manage fewer than two dozen devices, this technique might work for you. 
and if you have large network uh, if you manage a large network uh, research uh, your research your networks with port security features one port security feature lets you force your switches to allow only one mac address for each physical port on the switch this prevents hackers from changing the mac address of their machine or from trying to map more than one mac address to their machine it can often help prevent arp based man in the middle or monkey in the middle attacks as well and if you have uh, other net types of network that means for all networks your best defense is understanding arp poisoning and monitoring for it and i'll highly recommend deploying an arp monitoring tool such as arp watch to alert you when an unusual arp communication occurs this kind of vigilance is still the greatest weapon against all kind of attacks and um, the best line that i have word uh, on this specific hack uh, from robert louis stevenson is that the cruelest lies are often told in silence so, and that's how arp poisoning is exactly so yes th that's how it works so that would be it for this tutorial and since you know how arp poisoning works in the next tutorial i will be teaching you about the dns poisoning and how it works exactly and what is the actual difference between a dns poisoning and dns poisoning versus dns spoofing so that's it for this tutorial have a nice day ahead